Hi, my name is Frank Wu. I have the honor of serving as your president at Queens College. This is the first opportunity that I've had to give a state of the college address. What I'd like to do today is set forth a vision. We're engaged in strategic planning right now, and you're very much a part of that. So everything that I have to say will be adjusted based on what you have to say. I'd like to listen more than I talk. But today, let me explain a little bit about why I came here and what I hope to do. I was attracted to Queens College because of the diversity of the borough. We're the most diverse place on the face of the planet. And because at Queens College, we still believe in the power of higher education as the engine of the American dream. Our motto as an institution is we learn so that we may serve. My personal motto is I serve so that our students may learn. As you know, a liberal arts education is central to our mission. It provides students with a well-rounded education that will best prepare them for the multitude of opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. In this talk, I'd like to set forth a vision for practical liberal arts, a school for the double and triple major, for the accelerated master's degree student. In one sentence, in one word, my vision is students. It's to put students at the center of all that we do. That's the test for everything. Will it help students? There's one other word I, I would add, so it's really two words. That word is all, meaning it's not just this student or that student, it's each and every one. Student success is the defining metric. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are integral in all that we do. That's why we were founded. That's the whole point of the CUNY system. Students, all students. To that end, we hope to start a business school and an art school to meet the needs of students and the demands of the marketplace. We'll advocate together for the funding our students deserve. We'll make it through the pandemic and adapt for the digital natives who are our incoming students. We'll make good on the social contract, the mutual promise we've made to one another to embrace American ideals. Let me talk a little about academics, the budget, diversity, and then about the pandemic. Let's start with academics, because that's the core of what we do. Student success. That's what we're here for. We'll be doing more with technology and metrics and creating digital workflow. Our students, they're what's called digital natives, not like many of us. We're digital immigrants. We remember the world before the internet, when people used pen and paper. That seems antiquated, old school now. Although I still carry a fountain pen and, and jot notes in a notebook, we live in their world. I remind myself of that. For our students, well, what I remember is new is for them old. Anyone else remember VHS cassettes and recording favorite TV shows that you wanted to watch? That's before we could binge anything by streaming it. When we look at what our students want and what they wish for, and we look at what the market offers opportunities in, it's apparent that we have so much already that could form a business school. So we're going to bundle together our business offerings and uh, phase in over time a business school. Uh, later, we'll look at how to expand it and serve our students and market even better. But it's not just about business, it's about the arts as well. I've been so impressed learning about the Aaron Copeland School and our offerings in theater, drama, dance, photography, writing, and digital media. In every kind of art, we excel. We have such strengths. You've probably seen the Pixar movie, Soul. The main character was created with the help of Dr. Peter Archer, a middle school band teacher in Bayside and a 1985 graduate of the Queens College Aaron Copeland School of Music, who served as a consultant for the Golden Globe nominated film. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it to you. It not only captures what it's like to have a passion, jazz, it vividly depicts our borough in such a wonderful, literally animated and authentic manner. It's not just Peter Archer, he's exemplary, but all the graduates, all the faculty, wow. The work that they do creatively, it's so impressive. Without doing anything more, if we just put together everything that we have in the arts and bundle it, we'll have a first-rate art school. Business and the arts. They actually go together in arts administration. Some people might think, well, liberal arts, that's not so practical. But it is. 
We know that. If we give our students the tools to always adapt and be agile, their parents maybe want them to major in something different than what they want to major in. But if we offer them the double major, or the major and the minor, such as business and liberal arts, there's opportunity there to blend skill sets. That's who the future will belong to. People who don't just do one thing well, they do two or three things well. Both the business and the art school will offer opportunities to communities and individuals that have been underserved and historically excluded in business and the arts, not to mention arts administration. I'm so proud that the first cohort of QC and 4 is about to graduate. As I look at them, I think there's another opportunity, again, for us to not just get every student in QC and 4, but to really grow the accelerated graduate degree program. The marketplace is so demanding. The standards keep going up. Now, it's not enough for many jobs to have an undergraduate degree. You need the graduate degree, too we can offer it in a more effective manner because the programs we have are so successful. If you can do just a little bit more, a little bit faster, you'll come out with that competitive edge. Our career placement is enhanced by the CUNY Initiative, working with major employers in the New York City metro area. I want to look at how we can enhance the certificates and micro-credentials as well. Our goal is to train people to be productive and fulfilled within this ever-changing economy of ours. Let me turn then to the budget for a moment. We need to advocate together. We have the same goal, though maybe different tactics. Public higher education, it's not charity. It's an investment in us as an institution, in our students. It's actually those students who are the most effective messengers because they're the constituents of the public officials whom we need to persuade. There's been a change over the past couple of generations. What we once took for granted, we can't anymore, that everyone should have the opportunity to earn a Queens College degree. Well, some people are pessimists. They don't embrace that public good as much as I know all of us do. Let's win them over. Let's show them as we did with the study that we put out just a year ago. For every dollar spent, every tax dollar spent educating students attending Queens College, Taxpayers receive an average of $4.90, almost $5 in return over the course of the working lives of those alumni. Because our graduates go on to create small businesses, they employ people, whether or not those individuals were our graduates. So Queens College contributes to the economy for all. Most of our budget comes from the state of New York. The city of New York puts in some as well. Uh, but for the four-year schools in the CUNY system, it's about 60% that comes from the state of New York. So we need to persuade those folks in Albany, many of them are already our friends, that this is a worthwhile endeavor to support. At every opportunity, I meet with government leaders on the federal, state, and local level to advocate for funding on your behalf. Private philanthropy is so indispensable. It's a supplement, not a substitute, to the public funding. Our institutional advancement, they're terrific. I've been in higher education leadership going on 11 years now. I've never seen a better team. They raised 12 to $13 million per year. That's what enabled the Queens College Foundation, run by an independent board, to allocate emergency resources, a total of $3 million. They've never done that before. We all owe them a debt of gratitude. 99% of that money goes direct to students in RISE scholarships, athletic scholarships, and the food pantry. As we know, some among us suffer from food insecurity. We need to support them. Tonight's table is actually taking the shuttle bus and going out into neighborhoods to deliver bags of food and gift cards. We know that our students, by and large, don't come from backgrounds of great privilege, but if we enable them, if we empower them, not crush them under student debt, they will go on to the greatest success. They will achieve aspirations that aren't just for them. These are the aspirations of grandparents and parents who risk peril to journey to a new world. They're the aspirations of an entire community who sees the first generation go off to college. That's why diversity, equity, and inclusion are so important. It's a personal priority of mine. 
I've been associated in my career with an historically black institution, a unique school for the deaf, and worked as an advocate for the undocumented and participated in decisions recognizing gay equality and gender equity. That isn't enough, though. I'm here because this is what Queens College is all about. We have always been about diversity, equity, and inclusion long before it became a fashionable buzzword. So Queens College, I know it's the place for me. I want everyone else to feel it's the place for them too. We have 83 languages spoken on campus and at the homes of our students. Our School of Education has long held a lead role producing teachers and administrators for this diverse borough. When I walk up Casino Boulevard, I'm struck at how central we are to the borough. It's a powerhouse. If you ride the number seven train, it's the United Nations Express. That's what New York City has always been. It's a beacon of hope that beckons the world over. After President Gerald Ford, way back in the 70s, refused federal assistance, uh, you remember those headlines, after 9-11. After Superstorm Sandy, it's always been like that line from the hit musical Hamilton. Immigrants, they get the job done. Their children and grandchildren as well. There's diversity within diversity. I know that for some, this story of a rival is not the same because their ancestors came in bondage. They or their ancestors joined the great migration from the segregated South. I want to recognize that there's a range of experiences and opinions. Diversity is like democracy, a process, not an outcome. It demands engagement, constant participation. We benefit from having Saru on our campus, recognized as experts around the nation for their diversity work. We're hiring a chief diversity officer. We want to use data through tools such as Navigate and CourseDog to emphasize recruitment, retention, and graduation. Let me turn to the pandemic. I've put this at the very end because it will end. Although unprecedented has become a bit of a cliche, it's no less true. None of us have ever witnessed, much less lived through something like this, and we will make it through. I'm actually glad to have started my job when we face such a clear external threat. We realize we have no choice but to cooperate. Queens College has a role to play, a vital role in the rebuilding process that won't be just days and weeks. It will be months and years. We're a school, we, we teach, but we're also a place for important research and creative expression. Beyond that, we're an employer, a real estate developer, a cultural center, a civic space. I want to send many thanks to the Math and Natural Sciences School and John Dennehy for his innovation in COVID-19 testing recognized nationally and put into use on our campus. I've so enjoyed visiting labs, especially seeing students hard at work alongside their professors, even now with masks and social distancing. Many of our faculty have integrated lessons about the pandemic into their courses, about the history of disease, the, the consequences, uh, about how uh, best to adjust uh, in pedagogy. For the summer, we've already announced we will remain virtual. In fall 2021, we'll start back in person. I don't mean that we'll rush pell-mell and pretend nothing ever happened. No, we're going to do this knowing we have to adapt constantly and adjust. We'll be guided by the science and safety and we'll ensure that for our students, what we've learned during the pandemic uh, about education, virtual education, we'll take the best of that and offer multiple options to them. The social contract has come to the forefront. I wear a mask so that I don't just help myself, I help you. I trust you'll do the same for me. It doesn't make any of us less of a leader to, to recognize that. Pretending to be a tough guy or tough gal. Well, that's not going to prevent continued flare-ups of COVID-19. Even once we're back, we're going to need to wear those face masks and socially distance. The future won't be the same as the past. It never is. But it will be better if we make it so. I know that progress is not automatic. We must think about what students need, want, and deserve. What we've learned about the different modalities of pedagogy, those techniques that we use to teach, Many want classes in person. I yearn to be able to see old friends and meet new ones, but some will still want classes online too. Maybe that big lecture at 8 a.m. Well, you'll be more inclined to attend if you don't have to trudge through the snow just to do that. Maybe we'll mix and match a bit. 
That's why we have strategic planning. We want to find out directly from you. What is it that you see Queens College as being, becoming? I want to thank everyone who's been involved, a much wider range of people than is typical, and also the folks on the working group for reopening. They've been meeting every week. That's where I receive the advice and counsel that's so valuable. It's all about teamwork. This has been a time of conflict and division. It's been a time, as one commentator described, as malice toward all. Not in the words of Abraham Lincoln, malice toward none. When the nation was broken asunder in his first inaugural address, Lincoln at the ending said, I loathe to close. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. Four years later, when it was apparent the Union would eventually prevail, but there would be continued fighting before the result was achieved, before Robert E. Lee surrendered at Appomattox, Lincoln declared in his inimitable style, at once humble and profound, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds. Many of you I have met, some of you I haven't met yet, I strive to meet every member of the faculty and staff and every student crosses my path. And I mean meet in person, not on a screen. This will have to do for now. When I walk across our beautiful campus, I want to thank every worker who has been coming in. That's what this ceremony today is all about. And I'm just like you, a child of newcomers who believed in the American dream, empowered by higher education. This is what I want to do within our community. We've been tested. We've survived. Now we must help our students to thrive. Thank you so much. Over the past year, life as we know it has changed dramatically. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, most of us are spending the days inside our own homes and doing everything that we can to stay safe. But many of our brave and selfless employees here at Queens College have continued to come to our beautiful campus on a regular basis in order to maintain everything for us. We want to take some time to show our appreciation and honor these employees who for almost a year now have gone above and beyond for the sake of our community. First, I want to say a special thanks to Coronavirus Campus Coordinator, William Graffio, and Coronavirus Campus Liaison, Paramount Pandey, who have overseen Queens College's adherence to COVID-19 guidelines. We truly appreciate your dedication. Now, let's take a few minutes to hear about the devoted workers in each area of the college. Our buildings and grounds employees, led by Zico Krisik, are on campus daily, putting in time sanitizing classrooms and offices and keeping the campus maintained until we are fully back in person. Meanwhile, many of our B&G staff have also been overseeing renovation and modernization projects on campus so that when we all finally return, we will come back to a new and improved Queens College. Dear staff, this one is for you. Thank you. You turned up each day and continue to perform critical duties from disinfection and cleaning to maintaining and monitoring mechanical ventilation systems in buildings to ensure they remain stable and safe. It is because of your daily efforts that many praise our beautiful 80-acre campus and its well-maintained almost 2 million square feet of interior spaces. Buildings and grounds administrative and support staff, skilled trades, engineering trade, custodian team, campus planning, and environmental health and safety all work together as one unit. You continue to support our critical capital construction projects as they too continued while most of the economic activities were becoming increasingly idle 
across the city and state. We remain grateful to all of you for taking the center stage and facing this pandemic as able guardians of our great campus. Please thank your families too and share with them how valuable your contribution is to our college's mission and to students we serve. Thank you. Our IT department has done exemplary work during these challenging times. At the beginning of the pandemic, they worked day and night and switched the entire help desk phone system to a cloud-based system in just 48 hours and secured a Zoom license so students, faculty, and staff could meet their remote learning needs. First, I want to say thank you, IT. You guys have been an amazing value team members for Queens College as a whole. When the pandemic first started, we put together an online cloud-based help desk system in under 48 hours. We knew there was challenges, but somehow you guys stood up, got together, and said, let's do this, let's start helping the faculty, staff, and students. By the beginning of August 1st, somehow you guys went through 20,000 tickets. That's a lot of tickets to go through and help the faculty, staff, and students. I have to point out that there's amazing help between the campus distribution team. We've mailed out well over a thousand Chromebooks, iPads, laptops, and even T-Mobile hotspots to keep the faculty, staff, and students up and running. IT has not been idle while the pandemic has been going on. We've been in the middle of upgrading the college's Wi-Fi network. As well, we've been in the middle of a transition. We've moved our email systems off of the ground. From the front lines group, from the help desk, to the server team, to the training team, as well as to the video team, thank you. Thank you, IT. I'm unbelievably happy to be, you know, to be able to lead this organization and lead this team through the pandemic with y'all support. I'm only as good as the people around me, and y'all are amazing. We're ITS, we're here to help. With the leadership of Chief of Staff Megan Morwilk and CIO Troy Hahn, they implemented the ProxyClick app, which allows visitors to easily request access to our campus and for the administration to track who comes and goes. This has made it simple to look at any possible exposure to COVID-19 helping to slow the spread of the disease and keep our surrounding community safe. The system has been a resounding success. I am so pleased to have this opportunity to thank the many Queens College staff members who've regularly come to campus over the past year to keep things running smoothly. We are also paying tribute today to the staff who provide technical support in our laboratories, studios, theaters, and other areas. The limited in-person activities that have taken place over this past year could not have happened without this group. One especially important activity that Queens College boldly took on this year was providing study space in the library for students who needed a quiet place to concentrate on their coursework. The library staff made a plan, established a reservation system, and made this happen. Thank you to all of our library staff. It has been my privilege this past year to lead the ad hoc working group on reopening. This group meets remotely every week to review what's happening on campus, to share concerns, and to plan for the coming semester. I want to personally thank each member for their time and thoughtfulness. President Frank Wu, Provost Elizabeth Hendry, Associate Provost Alicia Alvaro, Dean Daniel Weinstein, Dean Kristen Hart, Chair of the Academic Senate, Simone Yearwood, Professors Megan Healy, David Gerwin, and Kevin Berth. Student Association President Sayer Kalut, Assistant Vice Presidents Troy Hahn, Jennifer Jarvis, Lee Kelly, Zico Kerchik, Lieutenant Deborah Huggins, Director William Graffio, Danya Bell, Michael Jimenez, and Lillian Zepeda. We are stronger and safer because of your contributions. Stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, and avoid crowds until we can be together again. Under the leadership of Lieutenant Deborah Huggins, our public safety officers, in addition to their normal duties of protecting our campus community, have taken on the additional task of performing health screenings for every visitor, ensuring our campus is safe. They have reported for duty at all hours of day and night, making sure every visitor, including students, faculty, staff, 
Even contractors and movie shoot employees are properly screened. During election season, Queens College also saw more than 900 voters per day for early voting. Not a single known case of COVID-19 was reported by voters who visited the college. The pandemic caused all the public safety officers to wear more hats than usual. It was an interesting transition for the public safety department considering how the once full and vibrant Queens College was now almost empty. Everbridge and ProxyClick health screening was one of the most difficult transitions. Contact tracing was necessary to keep us safe and to keep the college and the university informed. It was a system that, although effective, was not easy to work with. Public safety had to help individuals learn this system while we were still learning ourselves. But with each obstacle we faced, we managed to overcome as a team. The midnight tour, which is called the Alpha Tour, four o'clock in the morning, the check-in process begins. We have the contractors arriving. We have some of the BNG staff members arriving. Sometimes we have film crews arriving, two or 300 people, four o'clock in the morning. And we can't do this without the assistance of the sunshine that arrives from the bribe room tour. That is our morning tour. They come in to assist at midnight with the check-in process. Continues right into the afternoon, which our Charlie tour, which is our afternoon tour. Together, it's a team. And those that work together can stay together. Thank you all. I want to acknowledge Jennifer Jarvis and the rest of the employees in Student Affairs. During this time, the Summit Apartments have continued to house CUNY students unable to return to their homes during the pandemic. They've also maintained the night's table food pantry, allowing food insecure students to secure meals at a time when the service is needed more than ever. Under the leadership of Kristen Hart, our college librarian, with all the librarians, our library has been open for most of the pandemic giving students and faculty a break from remote learning and providing them a safe place to study and perform research. I would like to take this moment to thank all Queens College essential workers for their commitment and dedication to the Queens College community. The QC nurse was on call, on campus, and in full alert mode to address community concerns. With Terry's guidance, we understood when to isolate or quarantine, how to read COVID test results, and remain calm. Thank you, Terry. After many discussions, the summit was deemed the residence hall for CUNY students with housing needs. International, out of state, and housing insecure students spent two days moving into the summit while being greeted with a smile from the housing staff. The housing staff has continued to work around the clock to ensure our residents are safe and well taken care of. Our sincere thanks to Sean, Craig, and the full summit team. The night's nice table was faced with a dilemma. There was no staff to keep the pantry doors open. The student union custodial team was asked for a few volunteers to assist with one or two days of service. The team's response was immediate and overwhelmingly yes. Because of their commitment, the pantry offered pre-plated meals last summer and has expanded services to include a mobile program for the Borough of Queens. Frank, Wayne, Dominic, and the SU crew, we appreciate you. I thank you all once again for your extraordinary efforts during these trying times. I look forward to the days ahead when all of us, the Queens College community, can thank each and every one of you in person.